and we're live. Hey everyone, welcome into the At Flippin' Hippo's YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo, and today is Thursday, February 27th. Let me check and make sure I have um, my show here muted because I am such a professional. <laughs> Let's see who's in the chat. Rhonda and Amelia, welcome in. Hi. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Amy. Elizabeth and Mountain Man Treasure, welcome in to the live show for the haul video. Um, we're going to give it a couple minutes before I get into it. Let some people wander on in. Um, oh, there's something I wanted to say before we get started. Um, apparently, if you if apparently if, um, <laughs> I can't figure out how to word this so if you bought one of our plush guides and you're using a Mac it has come to our attention um, that the spreadsheet is not color coded all the other information that is supposed to be in the guide is there um, as far as the average sell price the average price that you should be aiming to pay for it and the sell through rate itself as far as the percentage it's just the column that has it color coded into uh, yellow, green, or red for how fast it sells is not compatible with Max. When you purchase our plushes guide, you do get the spreadsheet version of that and you also get the PDF version. The PDF version shows up color coded for those of you using Max. The spreadsheet will not because the coding that we used in Google Docs to create that color coding in the spreadsheet is not compatible with Max. So if you are using the spreadsheet because you want to put notes in it or whatever um, and you're using a Mac, you'll just have that one column will all be red and it won't be color coded, but you'll still be able to use it for all the other information. Um, and the reason we send the PDF and the spreadsheet is because sometimes people do like to take notes in their guides, things that they discover or find out um, when they're sourcing or using the guide. Uh, and you can't put notes in a PDF. So if you're using a Mac, just know that the spreadsheet's gonna show you all red in the color coding column, but your PDF will work just fine. So you put the PDF on your phone when you're outsourcing, and you can put your notes on your spreadsheet back home on your Mac. Does that make sense? Uh, we had a couple of reports of this coming in over the last couple of weeks, and th this is what we have determined. It's just the coding is not compatible with a Mac, the spreadsheet code, anyway. That said, let's see who else is here and then we'll jump on in. Hi, Megan. Make peace. Ladies Closet. Greg. Shelly is here. Welcome in. Small Town Pickers. Susie. Amy and Bill and David are here. Yay. No one the frog is Bill and David, guys. They have the blue wrench. They're one of the mods. They're two of the mods. <laughs> they're, a, they're a couple. Uh, Virginia's here. Lucille is here. And Elizabeth um, just purchased a plush guide the other day. Well, thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. Um, this is a hot mess over here. Everything is everywhere. Um, Keith did his best to set this up for me so that it's easy and I won't have to do a lot of bending or lifting, but we had to utilize two chairs. <laughs> it's not even that big of a haul. I just think it's kind of, um, there's, there's a lot, but you can't really stack stuff on top of some of the stuff back here. So we went to one Goodwill again. Um, we were gonna go to several. We were actually going to make the rounds and go to like three or four Goodwills. Um, but then something came up with my car and we had to take it to his grandfather's house to get a part repaired on it, to put a part put on it. So we just went to the one Goodwill and then um, the rest of the day my car was out of commission so we couldn't go anywhere else. But this Sunday I guess we're gonna do a whole bunch of Goodwills and get a really big haul. Um, not necessarily trying to build back another death pile since we've just gotten through ours and we are getting into the spring soon where um, yard sales and church sales will become more abundant and we can get more inventory that way but we are also being precautious just in case anything happens uh, with the virus and anyone gets put on quarantine any of the like if our city got put on quarantine i won't have enough stuff in here to work through it so we're kind of stockpiling a little bit for that um that is another topic <laughs> we're here for a haul video 
Um, Lisa Ann, I would love to see some new Emmy pictures in the Facebook group. Uh, I can do that. I just I took a video of Emmy eating a carrot. And she's very cute. If you guys don't know, I have a hamster. She's a Chinese hamster. So when you... Why am I talking about my hamster? I don't know. But when you think of a typical hamster, they're the big, round, fat ones with the fat faces, and they're, like, probably about that big. Emmy is a Chinese hamster, so she's only, like, this big. She's really small, and she has the coloring like a chipmunk, so she's brown with a black stripe down her back, and she has a wee little tail. Um, most of the bigger hamsters have the little nub tail. Emmy's is, like, it's just small. It's not as long as a mouse, but it's not like a typical nub. It's a little tiny wee tail. She's super cute. Her full name is MC Hamster. And we just call her Emmy. Um, we can start doing pet threads in the group over the week, over the weekends if you guys want, just for like something fun and different and off topic. I know people love pet threads and seeing each other's pets and sharing their little fur babies. So we can do that this weekend and I'll put in some of, of Emmy eating all her treats because she is the most spoiled hamster in the whole world. Um, so Lisa, we will, um, definitely get some pet pictures going. Maybe we'll do that like every weekend. Pete, nope, I'm still rambling about, uh, possible quarantines and hamsters. Um, she's just so cute. She's very small. Um, all right. So we went to the one Goodwill this weekend. We spent $65.22 on 61 items. And that averages out to a dollar six an item. This is the receipt. See my little notes at the bottom where I wrote. And it says 66 because um, we rounded up. You know, they ask you if you can round up. Once in a while, I'll do that. So, anyway, an average of a dollar six per item. Let's start with the plush. Always start with the plush. So I have three plush that I paid full price for and we're going to start with them. This is a Build-A-Bear Palace Pet. I don't, um, I ha I'll have to look her up. I am familiar enough with the Disney Palace Pets to know them when I see them. But I always have to look up the specific pet to see which princess it belongs to and the pet's name. But this is a Build-A-Bear and a Disney Palace Pet all in one. So I was absolutely willing to pay that $1.99 for this dog. And there was another one. That's not it. See, I thought I was set up and organized and I'm apparently not. Can't get her out of the bag. Hey Nate, uh, hey Nate, welcome in. Here she is. So this is another Bill the Bear, palace pet, and this one has on a wee little dress, and she's so cute. She's got this little dress on, and it has crinoleon. I don't know. She's super cute. She was also, she's a dog. She's a dog. I can't find her price tag. There it is. Dumb. There it is. $1.99. So, $1.99 for both of the Build-A-Bear Palace pets. And then I did pay a whole 99 cents for this one. Um, this is the female reindeer from Rudolph the Reindeer. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Classic cartoon. And her name is either Clara or Clarice. And I always forget which one it is. Um... And I have several listed in my store, but every time I have her, I have to check my own store for her to, to remember. I always want to call her Clara, but I'm pretty sure it's Clarice because I'm pretty sure I I always get it mixed up, Clara or Clarice. And I'm pretty sure the last time I listed one of these, I had it told myself in my head, just remember Silence of the Lambs. It's Clarice. Anyway, she is also a Build-A-Bear. Now she's going to need tested. You can see her battery pack hanging out. Um, so I'm going to have to put batteries in her and see if she works. And she had two tags. She had this one and she had this one. And they went ahead and let me and honored that one for me. Because um, they love us at this Goodwill. But I sold a 
Clarice. <laughs> uh, before, that was a Build-A-Bear that was supposed to have a heart that lit up and she was supposed to talk and stuff. And she didn't work anymore and she still sold for, I think, like 18 bucks. So I was willing for a buck to try it out because if she works, then I'll list her for even more. Um, Clarice, yes, Clarice. So I have to remember Silence of the Lambs. Have the lamb stop screaming. Um, hey, Simply Dana, welcome in. So, I do sell most Build-A-Bears naked, Pete, unless it makes more sense to sell them with their clothes. And I think that palace pet is going to keep her dress on because it'll raise the value of her. Um, but like the plainer animals that come with clothes, I do strip them and sell them naked. But something like that. Or like the ones that are clearly like it's a it's a Christmas say it was a Christmas plush and it had on Christmas outfit. I got a lot of plush. So let's dig in. And um Simply Dana is asking me a question that is like asking a mother to choose between her two children. This is like Sophie's choice. Um Overall, I probably like plush better just because they're more fun. I really enjoy sourcing them. I love going to any kind of a sale where they have tons of plush and boxes or buckets or whatever and just digging through them to find the treasures. I love taking the photographs of plush. I call it their photo shoots. <laughs> um, and they're so easy to photograph. They're so easy for me to list. I don't really have to comp them anymore. I don't comp jeans either, but... Um, overall, I probably like plush more just because they're more fun. When you're digging through plush at a sale, there's always that excitement of what am I going to find? Who am I going to find? Um, but jeans is a very, very close, very close second. Jeans is not as whimsical or fun, but it also comes with a lot of routines and, um, rituals that I enjoy because of my OCD. Um, I don't know. Prowly Flush, closely followed by jeans. All right, so all the rest of the animals I'm going to show you were 50 cents a piece, and I apologize for the bag. You guys are just gonna have to hear it crinkle. So these were all 50 cents a piece. We have an Adventure Planet, Kangaroo, and Nicky, look at his little face given side eye and then we have I was super stoked about this super stoked this is already listed in the store for $20 um, it's Douglas baby and it is from Douglas cuddle toy and so cute and 50 cents and already listed for $20 Then we have Dancer from Dandy. It has, I'll leave this one dressed too. It has a little tutu on. Um, I think the tutu is a play on its name being Dancer. So anyway, this one's cute. I have a Paw Patrol. This is by Spin Master. Spin Master is a brand I've been seeing a lot of lately, especially with, um, the Nickelodeon toys. So that's one of the Paw Patrol dogs. I have a vintage, you can tell by the tag, this is a vintage applause reindeer. Um, it looks like the nose is supposed to light up, but I don't feel, I like squished this thing every way to Sunday. I have squished everywhere and I don't feel any parts inside of it or anywhere you would squeeze for anything. Um, but you know, when I go to look it up, I'll probably find other ones and then I'll just have to disclose that mine doesn't work. So the way you can tell it's vintage, the old vintage tags on plush are printed, it's like they're printed long and folded in half and half half of the writings on that side and half of the writing it can you see it is on the other side so it's like they print the tag fold it in half and attach it to the plush 
And then we have a whole bunch of Beanie Buddies. But before we do the Beanie Buddies, I'll show you my Cinnamon. Do, 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 the Cinnamon by Gun. Do, do, do. Rhonda and Amelia says, theirs did not light up. Hi, Lisa. Welcome in. Douglas Cuddle Toys is a huge bolo, Shelly, so definitely take note of that brand. This is just a Coca-Cola bear. He'll probably go, or I think he is already up for like 10 bucks, but for 50 cents, I grabbed them. And then we have some Beanie Buddies. I have Nestor, who is the Christmas owl, the blue glitter eyes. This is Tundra, the white tiger. He also has blue glitter eyes. Then we have Glamour. Glamour. This is a little leopard, pink and purple with glitter eyes. And then my personal favorite. It's already listed. I'm going to tell you that, but I was really tempted to keep this one because it's a hamster. <laughs> and it's so cute. What I might actually do is if this doesn't sell in the first month of being listed, um, I might just end the listing and, and keep it for myself because I cannot get over. His name is Rodney. He's Rodney the hamster. And he's a rainbow hamster. <laughs> he's so, look at his little hamster face. I just think he's so cute. Um, I'll give him a chance to sell. You know what always happens though? Whenever I say that about anything, like whether it's a plush or let's say it's a pair of jeans I really like that I know is my size, I'll list them and go, okay, I'll give them a chance to sell. But if they don't sell, I'm going to take it out and keep it. They always sell like really fast, like as soon as I say that. Or if something's been around for a while um, and we've given it a chance to sell for a little bit, I'll be like, well, maybe if it doesn't sell this, this time after we relist it, maybe I'll um, take it down and keep it for myself and then it'll sell every time. So, don't say you're going to keep something, because every time I say it, the things sell. Um, Amy says, I finally bought Awesome in a spray bottle to clean my plush. Thanks for the idea. Yeah, it does absolutely work amazingly. Awesome is pretty awesome, and we don't just use it for plush. I clean my shipping table with it. Um, I spray it on clothing stains uh, for the store and in, in actual like my clothes, I'm pretty much a klutz and uh, you can't take me anywhere. I, I often spill coffee or food on myself. Um, so I use it on clothing. I use it to clean the bathroom surfaces sometimes. Um, I say sometimes because I like to use Lysol or like antibacterial in there. But Awesome is pretty cool. You can clean pretty much anything with it. Oh, the other thing I do is I'll lightly spray it on a paper towel and wipe down any glasses or mugs I'm about to list. It makes them look really nice and clean and gets rid of the dust. Um, it works well on shoes too. Just be careful, like not suede or anything like that that shouldn't get wet. But if you've got like patent leather shoes or something, um, you can just lightly dampen a cloth with Awesome and just kind of wipe it over the shoe and it'll make it shine really, really nice and look very pretty for the for the photos. Um, in fact, someone had asked me, I think it was Dave, I think it was you, David, um, when I had listed my Danskos that were the patent leather, he wanted to know how I got them so shiny and pretty in the photos. And I'm like, it was just awesome on a paper towel. So yeah, awesome is really cool. Hey, Holly's here, guys. Everybody say hi to Holly. Um, she's, I run amok there at the Blue Wrench. I love Beanie Bees. Beanie Bees? I love Beanie Boos and Beanie Bees. I love Beanie Boos. Um, I do find cute plush. I found a racing horse from Rehoboth Beach. It's a cheap knockoff brand from um, like the claw machines. Just blocking my face there. Um, but it's up for 20 bucks. So. Race horses. I got a little unicorn. I have one like this that's pink. And it has glitter ears and this one's blue with like gold horns and hooves horns it has more than one horn um it's classic toy company which is one of my favorite it's a generic it's a horribly generic 
off brand of plush, but I do so well with Classic Toy Company. It's one of my favorite ones to find, especially when it's animals that people like. This one's got cool eyebrows going on too. It's got some serious eyebrows. Super cute. So again, other than the two palace pets and Clarice, the reindeer, all these plush I'm showing you were only 50 cents a piece. And speaking of plain Build-A-Bears, here's one right here. Yeah, it did almost look like a Wells Fargo host. Oh, oh, I have probably got issues talking today. Jeez. Blah. It did. We had a white and a black Wells Fargo horse um, that we sold before. That's what I thought it was. Build-A-Bear. Naked. Plain. Um, he's already up. I can't remember if I put him up for probably 18 or 19. I'll take a best offer, probably around 16 or 17. But even these little plain ones like this, I usually start around 19. All right, so that's all of the plush. And no, that's not. I got one more. I love these, you guys. This is only the second one I have ever found. The first one sold, I think it was uh, within two days of being listed. They're squash mallows. Squash mallows. You see their tag? If you find these squish squash mallows, definitely pick them up. They are super soft and really squishy. And this one's a... I think it's supposed to be a unicorn, but it looks like a fat hamster or a fat pig to me. But um, super soft and cute. It's got a little horn. I love these squash mallows. I say I love them, and I've only ever found two. But after I found the first one, I knew that I was going to love them and get them every time I saw them. Um, yeah, the squish mallows are definitely a bolo, Christy. Um, so the Wells Fargo horses we sold, Virginia, I did not specifically source to sell. They were mine from when I was a teenager, and then I gave them to my kids, and then when they outgrew them, Instead of donating them, we sold them. Because that's what we do around here when you're a reselling family. Whenever you um, get rid of clothes or clean out closets or whatever, most people do that. They do the spring cleaning or whatever, and they take all the stuff to Goodwill. We list it all. We just sell, sell everything. So um, they didn't go for very much. They, didn't, they sat for a while, too. Um, so, yeah, I'll have to make sure that the day I put the... He's not even photographed yet because he needed a bath. I had to spray him with awesome and let him soak overnight. Him got a bath. Um, him go out bath. So he'll get photographed Monday when I do my next round of plush. But I'll make sure I cross post him right away. Um, a witch and a vampire. Oh my god, I'd be so jealous and I'd probably keep them both. <laughs> um, so I just picked this up because it caught my eye because it had tags has the actual tags not just the Marshalls tag um so they keep their skirts the rack of the skirts is over by where the shopping carts are or the trolleys or whatever you guys call them buggy um and this was hanging on the rack with, with the skirts and when I went to grab the shopping cart I saw it, that it had tags and I glanced again and it had the color of the week which is green can you see that so green was 99 cents, and I figured, what the heck, new with tags for 99 cents, I'll pretty much pick up any brand um, that has tags. And we're going to put that over here. All right, so now we're going to get, let's get into the clothes next. They're all mixed up. Keith just brought these in from, or brought these up into the eBay room after he washed them and dried them so they're all just like bagged up and not in any kind of order I didn't organize anything so green 99 cents cabbie jeans you guys may have seen me get a pair of these in the last thread up thread up rescue box I opened live and this is a brand that Megan has mentioned to me before, and I never found it, ever. And then I got one pair in the thread up box, and then I found these last Sunday. So they were $0.99, cents, so I definitely picked them up. 
I have nowhere to put stuff. We're just going to put it down there. That hurt my eyes. <laughs> the stripes. Yeah. And again, 99 cents. Gloria Vanderbilt. Teal collared um, capris. Bermuda shorts. I'm thinking these are more going to be capris. Not capris. Bermuda shorts. It's hard for a hobbit to determine um, what is capri pants on normal people look like flood pants on me. Um, but I go by measurements. So, and I'll probably use all the keywords anyway. Capri, Bermuda. So these were also 99 cents. They're Gap. I love Gap. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite bread and butters. Um, this is the Always Skinny Brown Corduroy Pants. You guys know I love corduroy pants. I do just as good with them as I do jeans. I just don't have as many of them. Um, so I don't sell as many of them because I don't have as many listed as I do jeans. But they do, they do well. Capri pants are a good find. Then we have a shirt. This is a shirt. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's Zara. Zara? I don't know how you say it. Zara. I'm going to say Zara because that's what I want to say. Green, 99 cents. Zara man. It's a blue plaid button front long sleeve. So that was a good find for 99 cents. Then we have... More Gloria Vanderbilt. These ones are a size 14, full length tan colored jeans. With the Gloria Vanderbilt, if they're size 14 and up, and or a uh, unique print or color, I always grab them if they're 99 cents. These colored jeans, I know I've said this before, but I will repeat myself. These colored jeans, like jeans that are tan, green, purple, pink, blue, yellow, anything that's not normal blue jeans that are, you know, have like the medium or um, dark wash or whatever. I do really well with those. They go pretty fast for jeans. I got more Gap. 99 cents. These ones are also the Always Skinny, but these are actual jeans. And these have a lot of distressing rips, holes, tears. And as ridiculous as it sounds, jeans that have uh, holes, rips, tears, and distressing are typically worth more money than jeans that aren't in disrepair. <laughs> Thanks Whitley's Wears, appreciate that. Um, this is gonna need steamed because this is funky. <laughs> Look at this. It come out of the dryer like crepe paper. <laughs> it's so bad. That's why it's a Columbia Omni shade with the sun protection. So these Columbia shirts, like this, like the Omni Shade, the Vented Fishing shirts, all of those, if you put them in the dryer, they literally come out like they have been wadded into a ball in the back of your dresser for two years, five years. So I'll just have to steam that one, that's fine. But it was 99 cents for a Columbia Omni Shade plaid short sleeve button front. Uh, no, Meryl, I actually haven't even had a chance to sit down and write to Poshmark yet to this morning. So, I'll have to do that at some point tonight. we got to go grocery shop. I'll get to it. I will write them, but I haven't had a chance yet. Um, Montego Palms. This is Silk. And because it's silk and it did go through the, the dryer, I'm going to go ahead and probably steam that one as well. And it was 99 cents. I don't really think we did too much full price this week. We found a lot of really good stuff just for the 99 cents. All right, you guys. Longtime viewers, do you remember the I want a better butt jeans that I was so fascinated with? I still am. If I find I want a better butt jeans or by YMI, which is a horrible brand, and I will never source it for anything except for the I want a better butt jeans, 
they um, I'll get them for 99 cents they typically sell for around 18 to 20 bucks but they're almost always first class to ship so you're not paying for a pad of flat and they sell within within a day or two of being listed and then I discovered these ones last year too you guys might remember these are the butt I love yous and they're right in the same category to me as the I want a better butts these ones are called butt B-U-T-T, -T, I love you. So the I want a better butts and the butt I love yous are shaping or slimming. You can use both of those keywords, but they're jeans that are supposed to lift and shape the derriere and women love them. So these were 99 cents. And not your daughter's jeans, which is a good, you know, it's a good run of the mill. I hate to say it's bread and butter because once upon a time it wasn't. <laughs> but all those people that love their fast nickels in that race to the bottom have ruined yet another brand. And that's all I'm going to say about it. And if I sounded snarky, I meant to be snarky. All right, so these are not your daughter's jeans. They were 99 cents. They're black. Oh, yeah, I didn't mention black when I was talking about color jeans, but black does really well too. Black is slimming, and I think a lot of women. Um, know that and they like their black jeans. I like black jeans. I don't have any but used to wear them. Okay, so these were also 99 cents And these are Lee But because they were only 99 cents and because of their size I decided to pick them up I'm trying to get it so you can see it. They're a size 16 women's um, and they have this inner band, which again is like that sh slimming, shaping. The inner band is supposed to slim the tummy down. Um, so those are always, you know, the, any of the jeans, I always talk about the so lifting and so slimming from Chico's and those butt jeans. But any jeans that are slimming, lifting, shaping, they're good to get. Um, I have never come across William Rast in my travels or my sourcing. Um, jeans are long tail, so I would like to, I, first I would need to know how long sitting and sitting and sitting means to you. Because if it's not nine months or longer, it's not been sitting and sitting and sitting, it's only been sitting. Um... If they retail over 110 and they're used and they're in really good shape, I would probably be asking more like 50, 60, maybe more. Um, like I said, I'm not familiar with that brand, but if it's if it's if it's more of a luxury brand than Silver or Miss Me, they shouldn't be listed at 30. So, um, but it, jeans take six to nine months to sell. Period. And jeans that cost a lot of money are going to take a little bit longer because not everyone is willing to pay high dollars for their clothing. Sold a pair of those Lee jeans in a couple of hours. Um, what I would do then is retweak your key, your title, Dana. Make sure that you have the correct formula. Um, William Rass, women's jeans size, and then all your keywords. You want your rise, the cut, is it boot cut or flare? And you want the, the wash maybe but play around with your title I would end it sell similar rework the title make sure you got really good keywords and double check that you're using the correct formula um, make sure your photos are good and on a white background and then um, list them higher 60 75 free shipping best offer and see what happens Yeah, you shouldn't be, I mean, you drop your prices a little bit over time, but sometimes when they get to the point where they're too low, you got to start all over again from the top, and then they'll sell sometimes. <laughs> Thanks for spearheading. I'm pretty, I'm just <sighs> off topic from the hall. I'm just so irritated because it's enough that we have to deal with that crap from eBay where, um, you could call 
10 different times in one single day and get 10 different reps who give you 10 different answers because they're not all trained. It just seems like they're not all trained. There's a train coming by. Um, they're not all trained from like the same book or something and they just, everybody's just allowed to answer whatever they feel like answering you that day. And now Poshmark is starting to be that way. That's like, it's really not that hard for a company to have one general book with guidelines for their employees to follow. I, I don't see the trouble there. I mean, I've never heard of companies that hire customer reps and just tell them, oh, we're not going to train you, you just answer whatever you want, but that's what it feels like with eBay most times. And now with Poshmark reps giving out different answers, it's really frustrating. I would like for them to be more streamlined and have better trained employees. That is a <laughs> soapbox I'm, I'm going to get off of now, but uh, uh, Zara... Another Zara. This one's Sunset. This one was also 99 cents. We've like never really found this brand before. A couple of times, not a lot. So that was cool. This one's got a print that's neat. And now the train's gone, so you can probably hear me better. Da -da -da -da. And then we have Old Navy. Which is another one of my favorite, personal favorite bread and butters, 99 cents. They're just, you know, jeans. Nothing too exciting. Flare. Big bell bottom legs. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what brand these are until after I show you them. 99 cents. These are leopard print or cheetah print. Leopard print, I think, has the white. I don't know. These are either cheetah or leopard print. If you have an opinion on which one they are, please let me know. I think they're probably cheetah. Anyway, these are the super coolest cheetah print jeans ever. If you're into this kind of style, if you're into animal prints, these are cool, right? And they were only 99 cents. And I'm going to show you the brand. Because this is a Walmart brand. <laughs> time, time, time and true. And I don't care because they're cool enough that I'm still going to try them for 99 cents. Everyone's saying leopard. I thought leopard had bigger spots and they had the white between the black and the brown. All right, these more Gloria Vanderbilts, 99 cents. These are only a size eight, but they are unique enough that I picked them up for the 99 cents. Um, these are capris with uh, embroidered flowers there on the side and they're brown. They have nice pockets in the back too. Oh boy, I'm throwing stuff on the floor. This was 99 cents. It just caught my eye because, it, yeah, it's a scrub, but it's um, cute. It's like blousey. It doesn't look like your typical scrub top, and from what I understand, if you pay attention to the prints and the cut, they can do pretty good. I think all opinions are dumb. <laughs> Nate. Nate, Nate, Nate. All right, these are 99 cents, or they were 99 cents. They are Gap bootcut jeans. Just another nice pair of bread and butters for me. And then we have, speaking of Chico, so slimming. Love these. Love them, love them, love them. 99 cents. These ones have a cool zipper pocket there. They're capris and they're black. Hi Alexis, welcome in. I like your little poem. Then we have um, some jeans. <laughs> These are Gap. I don't see the Gap in the waistband, but it's there. They're Gap 1969. Premium skinny jeans. 
for the low, low price of 99 cents. And they're one of those smaller sizes that I like. And then I have, what in the heck did I pick this up for? Somebody please tell me. I have no idea what this is or why I would get it. Oh, because, no. Did I get these? Am I crazy? Why? I mean, they were 99 cents and that's cool or whatever, but, um... I can tell you guys, maybe I'm going crazy, but I honestly don't remember sourcing these. <laughs> I don't know what these are or what I got them. <laughs> They're soft. <laughs> They feel like wool. Um, they're not wool. The tag says cotton. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe my alternate personality snuck these in the cart. Uh, I know. I okay. One thousand percent. I don't remember sourcing these or picking these out or putting them in the cart. But they're here, so we're gonna sell them. But they're gonna need steamed because they're pretty wrinkled, as my grandmother would say, wrinkled. My God, this seems to be like happening a lot more where I get home and I'm like, I don't remember sourcing this. Maybe I need to see a doctor. <laughs> Holly. <laughs> uh, probably. Um, yeah, I don't know how they came home with me, but they're here, so we're going to sell them. Um, Irma says, hi, I love your channel. You're very sincere and real. Apparently crazy too, but thank you so much. Uh, Junie, junk trader. They jumped in your cart. Um, I don't know. I don't remember that. I, I can remember things I sourced two and a half years ago at the bins. Can't always remember what I paid for them. If you watch the What Sold videos, sometimes how I say, uh, I don't remember how much we paid for it, but I remember where it came from. But. Okay, so these, I don't know if you can see in here because this light is really bad. Um, but when these go under the photograph lights, these have a pinkish purplish under tint. Like, do you guys remember denim in the 80s? That's what these reminded me of. They're Gloria Vanderbilt. They're a super good size. Check that out. But when you're not looking at them here in the video, like right in front of my face, I can see it. There's, I can't get it to show to you guys, but they're like a pink and purple, like undertone, like those denim jackets and stuff. Those of us that are old farts like me wore in the 80s and 90s. There's a bag attacking me. Maybe so. I don't know. I tend to stay. I tend to practice social distance at the at the thrift store. Um, junk girl. Hey, welcome in. Maybe someone else did put them in there. In there. I don't know. I don't get close. To, I stay by my. I don't know. I stay away from people. Um, Alexis, you're welcome. Thrifty Chica, it has been a while since you've been to a long, a long show. <laughs> a live show. It's been a lifetime since you've been to a long show. Because I speak really well. Okay, Gap. Dun dun. And these have, um, they had something that was unique. Oh, I just thought the tops of it looked cute. That's what it was. The waistband's different. And they were 99 cents. I can tell you I wouldn't pay more than that for them. But I can't find the green tag. But I would not pay full price. When you go to our Goodwills on Sunday, one color is 99 cents and everything else is full price. So you either get it for 99 cents or 6 dollars if it's changed. And I would not have paid that for Gap. I got one more bag of clothes to show you. And then I have something behind me here. That I haven't picked up in a long time because I hate them. I hate them. Let's see what I can grab out of this bag. 
Da -na -na -na. More gap. There was so much gap. I'm sure you have noticed that trend. There's the green tag. They're just gap denim jeans. Nice looking jeans. But there was so much just bread and butter for 99 cents, which, I mean, it's more exciting to find the home runs and the bolos and the big expensive brands, but that just doesn't happen here very often. Um, and we've built our business up on paying, you know, 99 cents for bread and butter clothing and 50 cents for bread and butter plush and just selling in volume. Um... These are some jeans. <laughs> uh, here, let me show you what they look like. Oops. No depth perception either. I am a professional YouTuber. <laughs> so these are flowers. Uh, and they're on the jeans. And they're jeans. I can't read the tag. And I'm guaranteeing you I picked them up because they were 99 cents. There's the green thing. Um, and they were unique and cute, but I can't even read that. My eyes are telling me no. Mix it? I don't know. I'll figure it out when I get, get them under the actual photography lights. And we have a shirt. This is a shirt. I didn't realize Keith found this much of Zara. He said to me, I found some Zara shirts, and I was like, cool. Well, he told, oh yeah, there it is. I was say, I know he didn't pay for price. 99 cents. Another Zara. Cool. Some of these are going to really need to be, I think, steamed. But that's okay. That's part of our job. That's why I have that steamer behind me. I have the steamer for plush mainly, but it also takes out wrinkles. Uh, 45 minutes to an hour, Thrifty Chica, per store. So this trip, I can tell you exactly how much time because we were on a time limit because um, his Keith's grandfather is a mechanic. Y'all, I'm going to go way off topic here and tell you a little, little tiny personal information and a little story. His grandfather was a mechanic. He worked for Heinz, which Heinz started in Pittsburgh. For those of you that didn't know, this is where Heinz started. In fact, the really beautiful, gorgeous Victorian um, house that's over 100 years old that the first Heinz family moved into is like down down the road ways from us and it's been kept up in pristine, beautiful condition. It's a historical landmark. Anyway, Heinz started here. Keith's grandfather was a mechanic for Heinz for years and years and then he retired and now he's our personal mechanic and he works on our cars for us and does stuff for us. Um, and I digressed too much and I lost, okay. So they wanted us at their house by noon so he could get started on this part that he was putting on our car. And our Goodwill opens at 11. And one of the girls was talking to me that I know that works there. And I kind of like told her, okay, we have to be out of here. And we have to be somewhere at noon. And I ran over and started looking at something else. Anyway, when we were getting into the line, she said, you've got 15 minutes to get checked out in your car and where you need to be so it took us 45 minutes to find all of this um and then we were at his grandparents at 12.05 and it's like a it's a good 10 minute drive so it probably took 10 minutes in total to get all checked out and everything in the car but yeah about 45 minutes to an hour per store but there's two of us so don't forget there's two of us we split up i look at jeans and plush he looks at shirts electronics and everything else um, and the shoes are just kind of like there. They're above the jeans. So um, it sounds like we get a lot in a very little time, which we probably do because we're pretty fast. But there are two of us. So, And anyway, that was a little story, a little history story about Heinz and then a little tiny story about his cute grandfather, whom I love so much. Yes, Dave and Bill did get to see the Heinz house. I showed it to them. It's, it's, an, it's so pretty. It's just... Like when you think of olden times, that's what you think of. So, um, for fun and games, I actually have entire videos on how and why we steam our plush. So please feel free to search the channel and look for those videos. 
Um, look for the one that's like hippo bath time. That has the best information in it. I explain um, why we steam, why we chose the steamer that we have, and show you how I steam the animals. Hey, Robert! What's up? Slept in. Da -da -da. All right. These are jeans. <laughs> oh, these are a size 16, which is why I picked them up. They're the Levi's Signature, which you can sometimes find at Walmart, but that's okay because they're 99 cents and they're a big old size. Everyone is more excited to see Robert than they are to see me. Oh, 99 cents. Da, da, da. That's gonna need steamed. I think I'm gonna have to hire more hippos to do some steaming. This one's wrinkled too. Jeez, Keith just crammed in the bag. No, I don't care. I'm just complaining. So this is another one that it was 99 cents. You can see from the green tag, and this is one that is prone to wrinkling. Um, if you wash it. So it's a Columbia PFG 2XL. The tag's a little wonky, but that's okay. So it's a 2XL PFG Vented Fishing Shirt. You guys, these are bolos. I talk about these sometimes. We love it when we find these. They have the vent in the back. But these are really, really prone to wrinkling. Like if you wash and dry your clothes like we do, they come out looking like this. Um, and then if you're going to steam them, you want to steam them like right before you take your photo. Because even if you steam it and lay it out somewhere really nice, it gets wrinkled again. These are just really, wink wink these are wrinkle, wink, wink, wrinkle. They wrinkle a lot. It is snowing outside pretty bad. Looking out there. Hi, Megan. Welcome in. Thank you so much, Bill and David, for putting the link up. Here's another one. Keith was over finding some Zara shirts, wasn't he? All for 99 cents each one. These are nice shirts. They're Zara. Keith was finding him some Zara shirts, apparently. Then we have another pair of corduroys. So these are not that great of a brand. You guys probably all know that this brand has pretty much been oversaturated and ran down to the bottom on eBay. But when I find stuff for 99 cents, it's size 14 and it's corduroy. I'll grab it. I'll sell it. I'm magic. I sell stuff. Uh, another Zara. Oh, this Zara. Green. This one's just like a plain tee, but still... It's a good brand. And more Gap. 99, 99 cents. You guys think that my goof, goof ups are funny in live shows. I should probably put together a reel of the uh, outtakes from my pre-recorded videos. Those are pretty funny. Alright, these are polka dots. Holly, <laughs> you keep that white crap. I don't want it. We have to go get groceries and I hate going out. I don't like going outside, A, to begin with. I'm pretty reclusive. Um, but B, if it's below 70, 50, I don't know. And the winter of 50 can feel really warm here. I just really don't like snow, cold, and wind, and you know. 65 degrees of Robert Town in California. Nah. <laughs> this is blue, so this was five dollars. Let's see what Keith picked up for five dollars. Oh, it is a Tommy Bahama, one hundred percent silk. There's the silk and Tommy Bahama for five dollar. I got one more pair of jeans to show you, and then we'll do the shoes. See, we got a lot of stuff. 60 items. Not your daughter's jeans. More bread and butter. $4.99. Cents. All right, let's see if I can roll that chair out. Pull this one in. 
and over. Okay, I got some shoes. I don't like shoes. They're not my favorite thing to flip. They give me the heebie-jeebies. They're disgusting, but they are also money, and they sell well on Poshmark especially. And when you find them for 99 cents, and they're in this good of condition as the ones that I found, and they're cute, the sun is coming out. Cool. Um, I don't know. I'll pick up things I don't like to, to list or to source if the cost of goods is right and it's something I know will sell. I'll just force myself to do it because it's part of the job. Like, if having to list shoes is the worst part of my job, then I'm okay. Because think about when we all used to, or if you still do, work outside of the house and had jobs that you absolutely dreaded going into every day that you hated going to and you always had to do stuff you didn't want to do and it was just miserable um so I kind of try to look at it that way like when I find stuff that's like I don't really like listing that but the cost is good I know it's gonna sell then I put it into perspective if working from home and listing shoes is the worst thing I have to do today you know, <laughs> I've had a lot of really bad jobs that I hated, so I do it. It's money. It's profit. It pays our bills and it keeps our business alive. So I start the majority of my silver pairs about 50 bucks on eBay. That's with free shipping and best offer. And then I put them up for around 62 on Poshmark. And I put them at 50 so that I have room to wiggle down to 45 or 40. So these are, they were 99 cents. You can see the green tag in there. They're just Forever 21. They're not that big of a deal, but they were 99 cents. And if you look at these, they're not in that bad a condition, like a small wipe of awesome on the bottom there not here because it's a suede and they're cute aren't these cute for a buck hold on a notification is blocking my chat these are rockport which is a pretty good brand for shoes um, 99 cents because they were on sale. They're suede. They're nice suede shoes. Look at the bottoms of those. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. I uh, tend to only pick up shoes that aren't going to require a lot of work too. Let's be honest. If I find a pair of shoes that's going to require a lot of work, effort, or anything, um, unless they're like Doc Martens or something that's going to sell for over 70 bucks, put them back. I don't want to spend a lot of time on shoes. Hey, an H guy, welcome in. So this brand, I reckon it's okay. Keith has picked up their shirts before, and I'm saying that because I don't know how to pronounce it. And I'm not going to try to pronounce it because we're not here to listen to Star Struggle with Words. Um, you guys can see it in there. You see the brand? So these shirts have done well on Poshmark and stuff, the men's. Um, the bottoms of these are pretty cool, pretty good. I'll just need to wipe them down with some awesome. These are also suede. And they have little buckles. And they're cute. So pick those up. All the shoes I got were 99 cents. I, I just kept seeing green tags on shoes and when I picked them up and looked them over I'm like eh, I'll get those too <sighs> Robert that's how I felt mm, I don't remember two years ago I used to say I would never ever you see I'm not using my hand on my face that I would never ever um, do shoes but then I did shoes and their money so um, they are easy to photograph. They are easy to list. You can almost always charge calculated shipping on them. Or I do. I do. And even the bread and butter ones, when you find them for a buck, even if you can only offload them for 15 or 16 bucks if they're paying the shipping, it's a no-brainer. And they do really, really well on Posh. 
Anyway, this is BCB Girls. So these were also 99 cents. Bottoms look good. Tops will need a little wipe with some awesome. And they're cute. Two more pairs. We'll do the last women's pair. These are Target. They're Mossimo. If you guys know how I feel about my Target and my Mossimo, they have a following and people like their products and people look for them online. I do pretty good with um, Mossimo, but I don't pay a lot for it. It's got to be a buck or less. But these sandals are super cute. They have like the little toe thing up there. I'm not trying to flip you guys off. Sorry. I was trying to point. They got the little toe thing, little strappy sandals. They're super cute. Um, and then the bottoms are nice. They actually look brand new. They still have their little stickies. But if you look at the bottoms, they look pretty brand new. So those are nice for many nice sets. And they're going to be first class. They don't weigh a lot. And last but not least today, I did get a man's pair of shoes. These are Permasale, Permasol, Permasol. Permasol, the lifetime soul. Never heard of it. And I don't care that I've never heard of it because these were green and 99 cents and they are super cool wingtip shoes. Look at these. These men's Oxfords like this that have the wingtip, I've always done really well with. Um, clearly, some brands will sell for way more than other brands. Um, size can matter too. But when I see um, shoes, look at the bottoms. I mean, these are in really good condition. They're not going to require much. None of these shoes, I'm going to get like a damp paper towel, like I said, and clean the bottoms with awesome. And the ones that aren't suede, I'll give a small wipe down when I'm doing the photos. Um, but these, I saw them and I saw the condition they were in and I didn't care about the brand. I'm like, these are super cool wingtips for a buck. And, um, they're a size, I don't know. I'll figure it out when I go to listen. <laughs> does not, I keep reading that comment. Alright guys, that is the entire haul. That's all 61 items that we got. And just for curiosity's sake, um, 18 of the 61 was plush. So I did get a lot of jeans. I'll be busy. I'll have a little bit of a death pile going again. Um, and then, like I said, Sunday we're going to go to probably three, maybe four Goodwills and get a really good stockpile going again. Um, but nothing that's going to end up in a death pile. Or nothing that will end up in an I don't want a pile for sure. We're definitely keeping a more keen eye and only choosing items that we will list, that we will take care of, that we want to put in the store and avoid getting the buildup that um, eventually took five months to get through. But I want to build up a little bit extra just in case. I mean, it is still full winter here. Um, so there could come a day where we can't get out. And then, of course, there is the possibility of a quarantine or whatever coming in the future we don't know you never know it's never a good idea to not have some kind of death pile it's a good idea to have maybe a week or two weeks worth of items around at all times and you can always practice the first in first out so if you want to stockpile say 150 items just for the end cases so you have stuff to list all the time just make sure that when you bring in new stuff that you're listing the stuff from last week. And then if that's your stockpile now, you bring in new. First in, first out, so nothing becomes stale. Nothing sits around for too long. Um, I do enjoy not having a death pile at all. Let me tell you, it's very freeing. But it's also very worrisome, and I don't like it because I, I, I feel like it's, it's okay to have a little bit of a stockpile. Just so you never run out. You never know what life is going to throw at you. So, um, Robert, enjoy your breakfast and your day. And uh, snow has stopped. Got a ship. Yeah, snow looks like it's done here too. It looks like the sun's coming out. So that's good news. Got to go to go to get a big shopping trip in today. All right, guys. Thank you so so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up on your way out. It really helps the channel a super lot. 
super lot. Make sure you're in our Facebook group, the Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. There's also a link in the box down below for you to join. It's free to join. you got to answer a couple questions and just agree to the rules before you come in. Our number one rule is don't be a turd. And that's why the Facebook group is such a wonderful little corner of the internet. And, um, oh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't and help us feed a hungry hippo. And you can email me if you want at flippinhipposhelp at gmail.com or you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Flippin' Hippos. Thank you again, guys, so, so much for spending an hour with me today and watching me unload my haul. You guys um, are the absolute best. Go be productive. Go make some money. And I'll see you next time. Bye.